Hai. Good morning. Tunashukuru Mwenyezi Mungu kwa kuwa imempendeza tukaweze kuamka katika siku ya leo. Na we thank God because of the specialness of this uh, second Sabbath that he has allowed us to be alive in this world. I invite you to today's presentation and uh, before we start, let us pray. Father God in heaven, we thank you, we glorify you, we honor you because of being good to us the whole of this week uh, in the lockdown. But uh, we have seen your mercies and your greatness in our life. We pray that you will be with us as we are about to read your word. May the Holy Spirit guide us according to your will. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray and believe. Amen. Uh, welcome to uh, this special Sabbath, confined uh, in our homes or uh, wherever we are, but uh, we believe that God is with us. And uh, as you go through the statistics of the disease that uh, has uh, brought all this to us, uh, we still have hope because those who are infected. Uh, it's a big number of people who have been tested, uh, who have been screened, and uh, a big number of them have been found to have the disease. And uh, also there's a big number of people who have died out of this disease. But if you compare to the infected uh, number to those who have died, truly those who have recovered, there are more. They even, uh, it's a bigger percentage compared to those who have died and because of that we continue to have hope that God is with us and uh, maybe things might turn to the worst but uh, we continue praying to God that uh, he will be with us and uh, he will answer uh, our prayers but um, most of all uh, it's important for us to turn to our Lord and uh, do all we can to uh, make to put our houses in order. Remember the story of uh, Hezekiah when uh, uh, it was time for him to die because of an illness that had taken uh, so long, but uh, when the angel came uh, with that message uh, to him, he prayed to God and God extended his time. Uh, but the call that the messenger came with is prepare uh, put your house in order and uh, even now just make sure that you have put your house in order put your life in order align your life with the one who created you and the one who has sustained you up to today uh, our today's presentation uh, the title is um, Satanities, Satanity in Uncertain World the world that you are living in you don't know you don't know what will happen I don't know if there is anyone uh, who had, uh, who saw, who foresaw what will happen today. But uh, the God we are living, uh, we are serving, he, he is out of time. His time is in his hands. And uh, he knows uh, the beginning up to the end. That's what the book of Revelation says, that he is Alpha and Omega. He is in the, in the beginning, he was there, and he will be there in the end. He controls the history of this world. But uh, the world that we are living in together with our life and everything that we do there are many certainties things are happening that we did not foresee you see when someone goes uh, when someone sits down and plans to open a business the only thing that we see in front of us is the profit and that is the only motivation but you can't go to a business that you are sure that you'll get loss uh, no one will uh, no one will venture into any any, any business that they are sure that uh, they will experience losses. And because of that, uh, we, our, our, our motivation uh, uh, is, um, is guided by gain only and nothing else. But uh, the world we are living in, as much as you are highly motivated, uh, you have checked all the research and everything that you, you, you could uh, uh, access. And uh, after, after making up your mind, you realize that you have put yourself into 
business or a venture that uh, uh, is going to ruin you uh, and you keep on wishing that if I knew uh, what will happen to me before I started this particular business, you could have decided otherwise. But that is the world that we are living in. You can't be sure of what will happen in the next minute, in the next hour, in the next day, in the next year. All of us, uh, we live in this uncertain world. But uh, as the title says, certainty, we can have, uh, we can be certain of our life. We can be certain of our salvation. We can be certain of what will happen to us as we live in this uncertain world. And uh, it's, it's, uh, it's important for us to have that assurance of our salvation. It's very important to us. Uh, as much as uh, we live in this uncertain world, when it comes to our salvation, we, ju we need to be certain because everything that uh, uh, guarantees our salvation has already happened. Jesus has done everything that will guarantee our salvation and because of that, no one should uh, be uncertain of his, of his salvation. We have examples of people who lived in this world and uh, prophets who ministered it to people, uh, people of God who lived in this world, and they were certain as far as their salvation was concerned. And one of them is Moses. Moses, if you go through the book of uh, Exodus chapter 32, verse 32, stood uh, before the children of Israel and uh, asked God, take my name out of the book of life if you are not ready to forgive. Uh, the children of Israel. This one, uh, it's surprising. How did uh, Moses know that his name is in the book of life? Uh, who told him? Uh, what assured him? What gave him that assurance that uh, his salvation is secured? As far as uh, his life is concerned, he knew that my salvation is secured. And because of that, he faced God with this request that take my name out of the book of life. If at all, uh, you are not ready to forgive the children of Israel. You know, during that time, uh, at this particular time, uh, there were not books. People were writing in uh, rocks, papyrus uh, material. Uh, people were writing uh, using clay. Uh, there was nothing like a book during that time. And uh, But Moses stood and uh, ask God to remove his name from the book of life. And uh, true uh, to his uh, certainty of his salvation, God weighed. How can this heaven be? How will the heavens be? How will uh, the eternal life be without Moses? And he turned from the decision that he was to make and uh, forgive the children of Israel and maintain the name of Moses in the book uh, of life. If you go through the book of Jude, you'll see what happened uh, at the end of uh, Moses' life. Another one, uh, Paul. Paul, writing in the book of 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7 uh, and 8, uh, Paul says that our fought. I fought, and uh, the only thing that I'm waiting uh, is my crown. Who told, who assured uh, Paul as he was writing to uh, 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 Timothy that uh, his salvation is secured? knowing that he has fought a good fight, he has protected the faith, he has done everything as far as his uh, uh, mission is concerned, and the only thing that he's waiting for it is his reward, a reward that he will receive during the end uh, of the world when Jesus comes to the second time. And uh, you wonder who uh, assured, who assured uh, Paul of his, of his salvation? And uh, uh, because he had his own shortcomings, uh, and uh, 
the challenges that he went through um, at this moment when he was communicating, he was going through so much, but his salvation, when it came to his salvation, he was sure that his name is written in that book of life and whatever uh, that will happen in his life, the only thing that he's waiting for, it is the crown that God has put for him when he comes the second time. Even Petro, uh, Peter, uh, in the book of First Peter chapter 5, verse 1, Peter testifies that uh, he, will, he will go through all the suffering, all the challenges, all the misfortune that will happen to the saints. He will go through them. But also, when they are glorified, he will be among those who will be glorified. Who assured Peter of his salvation that when uh, saints will be uh, when saints are glorified, he will be among them. Uh, even Paul, when he was writing to the uh, Ephesians, uh, chapter 2, verse, uh, verse 8, the Christians in Ephesus, uh, Paul was sure that these ones, they were saints, people who God has chosen. And uh, 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 he quoted of their, of, of their salvation. Uh, these are people who lived in this world and uh, they experienced challenges. They, were, they, they had their own challenges as far as uh, their Christian life is concerned. Their walk with God was concerned. If you talk of uh, Peter, Peter had his own challenges. Peter, uh, uh, he had a problem. He had a problem. Uh, I don't know if it is disabled mind or, or what, but uh, he had challenges when it comes to, to, to holding to what he has been instructed. And uh, one minute God uses him, the other minute uh, Satan uses him. And uh, out of all those challenges, you might think that uh, it was over by the time when Peter was uh, 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 started uh, leading the disciples. But uh, in the book of Galatians, we see Paul rebuking Peter uh, in the strongest terms possible. But uh, out of that, Peter still has an assurance that uh, when the saints are uh, glorified, he will be among them. Uh, Paul... He has an assurance uh, of his salvation, and he says that uh, the crown is there for him. Uh, Moses, he is sure that his name is written in the book of life. What gives these people that assurance? Uh, the only thing that we can understand out of uh, the assurance for their salvation, their certainty in their, in their salvation is they took the word of Jesus, the word of God, the way it says, if you go through the book of John chapter 3 verse 16, it says that um, uh, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whomsoever will believe in him will not perish but have everlasting life. Anyone who believes in Jesus Christ, he has that eternal life. Also, the book of uh, John chapter 14, chapter 17 verse 3, it gives us the way to eternal life. It's only uh, you need to know who Jesus is and the God who uh, sent Jesus. Once you know uh, who Jesus is and uh, God who sent Jesus, you have that salvation. Salvation is there for us. We have been assured by Jesus Christ of our salvation. But uh, if you don't understand if you are not sure of your salvation, if you don't have that certainty of that salvation that God has uh, saved us, it's, it's, it's important for us to have that certainty of our salvation. Without, without that certainty of that salvation, uh, the devil, our tempter, will be happy to use us according to how he wants. I want to give you uh, an example of a, of a bird of a bird by the name uh, Crown uh, a Crane. This particular bird uh, is the symbol of authority in the uh, Republic of Uganda. And uh, if you look at the coat of arms of the Ugandans, you will find the bird is there. That, this bird is beautiful. 
uh, it's an exciting one. And uh, this particular country chose this bird to be the symbol of the authority. In their constitution, uh, that bird is protected. Uh, no one is uh, supposed to hurt this particular bird. And um, uh, they love it. You go to Uganda, you'll find streets named after this bird, Crane. Uh, there's a bank called Crane Bank. Uh, their national team uh, is called Uganda Cranes. Uh, with all that protection, with all that love, how do you think the life of that bird could have been if it knew how it's loved, how it's protected? It could be different. But uh, do you think uh, those laws uh, and whatever that uh, the country has protected that bird, uh, they have that experience? You'll find them, they are running. When you come close to them, they are just uh, going away, just like any other bird. Uh, any other valueless bird in that country, uh, that's the same, the same value we have in our salvation. The moment you don't, uh, you don't have that certainty of your salvation, it is easier for the devil to treat you, to make you fear, to plant fear in you, the same as anyone else who doesn't have that salvation in them. Because of that, it's important for us to, to believe. It's important for us to understand that we have been saved. As long as you trust, you believe in Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. The Bible says uh, God loved this world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him will not perish but have that everlasting life. It's important for you to start living like someone who has uh, uh, who is saved. Someone uh, who is certain of his salvation. The moment uh, we believe, the moment we understand of our standing as far as the eternal life is concerned, uh, it will change the way we view who God is in our life. It will change the way we value things of this world. It will change the way we walk. It will change the way we relate with other people. Everything will change and that is the only weapon that the devil will always use to 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 uh, to distract you from your salvation. He will make sure that he has uh, put fear, he has put uncertainties in your salvation in order for you to not be sure of whom you are serving, whom you are who has, has called you. Uh, if you decide, if you believe today that uh, uh, in Jesus Christ. And have that assurance of your salvation, you will view your calling differently. You will serve God differently. The way uh, you will respond to the call of God will be different. I call upon each and every one of us today to stand, to stand and uh, go to the scriptures. Look for Jesus from the book of Genesis to Revelation because all the scriptures testify about this Jesus Christ that we love and he's the purpose uh he's the purpose for our salvation and he's the purpose uh, uh for our eternal life and because of that uh, let us learn to understand who jesus really is in this world and what he has really done to us and because of that we align ourselves according to the salvation that we are being called upon once we realize that uh, it won't be long. Uh, people will start identifying us as Christians, true Christians. Paul, when he went to uh, in his first missionary journey, uh, it took him around one, uh, one and a half years, uh, the experience that he had gotten uh, from the word of God and comparing the Old Testament together with the New Testament and understand who Jesus was. He shared with this, uh, with members in this particular uh, mission. And for the first time, people understood who Christians are based on their knowledge of Christ. And because of that, they, were, they started calling them 
uh, Christians. We will be given uh, different names. People will call you uh, many names. And when you, you introduce yourself as believing to this particular faith, uh, uh, people will, will already have judged you based on the perception that they have uh, out of your faith. But the moment you know who Jesus is in your life, the moment you start living like someone who is certain of his salvation, people will not call you any other name. Whether you say what, but they will understand that this particular person is a Christian. God has done something in this particular person's life. I call upon each and every one of us to seriously look uh, into our faith and uh, search in our hearts and see if there's a way that is leading us not to believe in Jesus Christ, not to be certain of our salvation, to take it away and lead us to the right path where we will believe like the saints uh, who lived in this world. They took Jesus to his word that because we believe in you, we are sure that we have been saved. And whatever happens in our life, we are sure that when you come again, uh, we will receive that glory that we'll share with anyone who will have waited for you. Uh, it's my sincere prayer that today our salvation will be assured. Jesus Christ will have a special place in our hearts and uh, help us understand him better each and every day. And especially at this particular time when we are certain of what will happen in our life uh, based on the disease that is upon us, uh, we call upon each and every one of us to seriously search in our hearts and uh, understand who Jesus is so that our salvation will be assured. And whatever happens in our life, we will be sure that when Jesus comes again, we will be with him in paradise. God bless you. Uh, we are praying. Father God in heaven, we thank you for your word. Uh, we believe that uh, it is uh, uh, our tempter's most uh, powerful weapon to put uncertainties in our life as far as our salvation is concerned. But we pray to you this morning that uh, you will have a special place in our heart and help us understand, O oh Lord, who you are. We know that we are living in a wicked world there are some many challenges that we are going through that they have engulfed our vision from truly seeing the true picture of who you are in our life. We have followed lies for a, for a very long time. Uh, we call upon you today to minister in our life in a special way. Father God in heaven, uh, have a place in our hearts and guide us to knowing who you are so that we can be certain of our salvation. The way Moses stood before you, and with an assurance that in uh, his name is written in the book of life. We need that assurance today, that our names have been written in the book of life, and whatever happens in this world, we are sure that the eternal life is ours. Because we believe in you, we trust that you are with us. Guide us, protect us, prepare us for your second coming, and help us be the light to the world at this particular point. Uh, we pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen.